Good morning. Today is Palm Sunday and we are glad that you are here with us. Uh, as we are uh, beginning uh, to say some prayers together, I want to remind you of how you can follow along. If you have a Book of Common Prayer, you can follow along beginning on page 80. Um, also, if you wanted a full text bulletin that you can print out or read along in another screen, uh, you can go to our website, gracelynchburg.org. You may be watching from that website right now, uh, but just up at the top or in the instructions, there are links for uh, the Sunday morning prayer bulletin. Uh, and that has everything that you need uh, uh, to follow along. But if you have a book of common prayer, we will begin on page 80 in just a minute. Now, if you need a moment to print those out or to find those resources, um, I encourage you uh, to do so now as we talk a little bit about Palm Sunday. And don't forget, you can also get a Book of Common Prayer, an online resource at bcponline.org. And uh, just navigate to the daily office and morning prayer. But Palm Sunday is an interesting day. It is actually called Passion Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion of Christ. We remember two things on that day. It is like we have a split personality. We are remembering at once when the people crowded the streets as Jesus was making his way toward the city of Jerusalem. And they welcomed him as a king, as a victor. They were waving branches that they had cut from trees in their yards and in the street. And they were laying them down in front to ease that path, to line the way that God was making on that road to Jerusalem. They even took the cloaks off their own body and spread it before the donkey that was carrying Jesus. It was a sight to behold. And we also remember today the passion of Christ. While they were welcoming him as king, Jesus was proceeding into the city where he knew that he would die. He knew that he would be executed and that he was to be handed over to the people to be crucified. It is a strange day indeed, and this is a day that very much, uh, and this week is, and it's total, very much overlaps our current situation. I think there are many parallels that we will hear in the readings that we have with the pain that we are feeling, with the hope that we have for God to come into our lives to save us and to heal us. As you take branches, uh, if you have the opportunity to take palms from here at Grace Memorial, we have them out in the columbarium for anyone to take. And we'll be uh, showing you how to make palm crosses out of them and things like that. But if you have these branches and the palms, or if you have something that you can get from your yard, maybe something, a flowering tree, a little twig of a, of a cherry tree that's still blossoming, I encourage you to take those as a sign of your welcome for God in your life and a sign of God's victory over death that for some of us we hope is coming tomorrow, that we hope is imminent, and that we know through the story and the encounter with Jesus that God is imminent, God is with us, and for that we give God thanks. But we begin with a prayer uh, from Palm Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So if you have your palms with you, or if you're coming to get them, I hope that they will be uh, signs of God's victory in your life, even today. Morning prayer begins on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer or in the printed bulletin. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Jubilate with an antiphon at the beginning and the end. 
The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Together. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Psalm 31, and if you're in the Book of Common Prayer, that can be found on page 623. 623. Verses 9 through 16, let us say it together. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am useless as a pot, broken pot. For I have heard the whispering crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me, they plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For each of the readings, the response to the word of the Lord is, Thanks be to God. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall be not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle is Canticle 14, and if you're following along on the Book of Common Prayer, it is on page 90. Canticle 14 on page 90. Let us say it together. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. 
O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 16, I think that's on 92 of the Book of Common Prayer. Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Let us say it together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel reading for today will happen after morning prayer. Uh, it will continue in the same broadcast. Um, this is actually uh, being pre-recorded, and so we are looking forward to Palm Sunday today a little bit, as we are... Uh, recording this prayer time. But the time has kind of been mixed up a little bit. The days uh, have seemed to run together and also to stretch out at the same time. To say that this is a surreal time is very accurate because it, because it is unlike any that many of us have witnessed or participated in or survived. These days are especially hard on many of us. Those of us who have lost employment, those of us 
who uh, are not sure what tomorrow holds, those of us who feel vulnerable and at risk, those of us who might have been in the house for too long and we're not sure what to do next. For me, this has taken a toll in a number of ways. Uh, the thing that I am most concerned about for myself is that I do not know where this will end. We know that we have a long time to go uh, for us in our isolation and in our social distancing if we are to protect those who are most vulnerable among us and even those that we believe are invulnerable or less vulnerable. We have seen in the current uh, virus and the statistics that are coming out of those who are infected that, for instance, uh, young adults are among uh, the most susceptible, the ones who are dying the most in the South um, are uh, those who are young from this virus. So we do not know much of anything right now. All of us, any of us, none of us is sure. None of us is confident about what will happen next, about what today might bring. And that is a scary place to be. We are not sure if those things that have brought us strength in our life, family, friends, faith communities, school, those things that have made us stronger in the past, we do not know what those will look like in a month or two. And to be honest, I'm not confident that come September, that things will be as they were. I'm not sure that things can ever be as they once were. Can you say that with confidence? I don't know many who can, and the ones who can, I wonder what they're trusting. Because you might be like those people who had their palms out, and we're hoping to see any king who would come along. Any king who would overthrow the dangerous occupiers of the land. Overthrow the oppressor. Cast out the violent person. Any king who is maybe tall enough. Who is maybe gallant enough. But our full story today reminds us that the king that they got was executed shortly after. What are you hoping for? In all of this, what are you hoping for? What would salvation look like? Because where God is concerned, God might look different than your expectations. And that itself is frightening. That itself is disheartening. But if we go back to the fact that none of us is certain, none of us are secure right now, there is actually an opportunity to be present, to be aware of God's presence now. To welcome God now. Maybe the branches that we wave when we say Hosanna, Hosanna. Maybe they shouldn't be a sign of God's victory. As much as a sign of God's procession into the world. God's entry into our own life our own place where we are broken, our own hurts, our own separations, our own exhaustion, our own anxiety. To welcome God, whatever God looks like, to show up and recreate us in this moment. We will not go back to normal after this is all over. Once we get uh, a vaccine for the virus, it will be, I imagine, weeks 
before the most vulnerable among us can rejoin fully into the groups that provide them safety and security and family and hope and strength. I imagine that we have a long time of learning not what it is that we've lost and grieving that, but learning who we are now. Who God has made us now. So I invite you to take the palms that you grab or the branches that you cut out of your garden or maybe even some flowers. I wonder what it would look like to take those items and instead of branding them as if you are some sort of uh, Jesus believing Christian, maybe you are a God looking for person just like your neighbor. And maybe we scatter those on the walks leading up to our house to welcome God into our home, to welcome God into our isolation, to welcome God's transforming power into our life when we most need God to show up. Because God almost never meets our expectation. And that is almost always a good thing. That is almost always a grace. That is almost always a sign of God's enduring and abiding love for us. For you. Amen. On page 96, I invite you to join with me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This hour we turn to you, O Lord, in full knowledge of our frailty our vulnerability, 
and our great need as your mortal creatures. We cry to you as one human family, unsure of the path ahead, unequal to the unseen forces around us, frightened by the sickness and death that seem all too real to us now. Stir up your strength and visit us, O Lord. Be our shield and rock and hiding place. Guide our leaders, our scientists, our nurses and doctors. Give them wisdom and fill their hearts with courage and determination. Make even this hour, O Lord, a season of blessing for us, that in fear we find you mighty to save, and in illness or death we find the cross to be none other than the way of life. All this we ask in the name of the one who bore all our infirmities, even Jesus Christ, our risen and victorious Lord. Amen. In the following prayers, please respond to Lord in your mercy with hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Betty, Bill, Sharon, Enid, David, Debbie, Sue, Gloria, Nancy, Jean, Harley, Mary Louise, Betty, Jean, Fred, Bill, Jean, Jerry and Glenn, Skip, Bud and Chris, Annie Bob, Barbara, and Gloria, and any others we wish to name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially those who in these days have died alone, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we also remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land, so to use our public and private wealth, that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment, and receive just payment for their labor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say the general thanksgiving that is found on page 836 of the Book of Common Prayer. 836. For those in the Book of Common Prayer or on bcponline.org, we'll give you just a moment to find your place. The General Thanksgiving on page 836 and in the bulletin. Let us say it together. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation 
for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God bless you and keep you. May God's presence shine upon you to comfort, guard, and protect you. May God be ever turned towards you to lead you into peace and wholeness. And may the steadfast blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be known to you today and remain with you always. Amen. I invite you to continue watching for the Passion Gospel, followed by some music. I invite you, if you are watching this as a video, uh, to pause it, get comfortable. It will take a few minutes, uh, about 15 minutes more of uh, reading, but it will be well worth your time to enter that prayerful and contemplative space. And now, the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord, he answered. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd. The sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, 
I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you were here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. 
Jesus said to him, you have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what he had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they had wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor said again to them, 
which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe, put on his own clothes on him, and then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were cru crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabbath and knini. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. 
They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had pr provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Thank mm -hmm. you. 